for coming to the first annual State of La Jolla Address. My name is Steve Haskins and I'm the President of the La Jolla Town Council. We believe that bringing together various groups and civic organizations in La Jolla at the same time and at the same place provides a great opportunity for all La Jolla's to get to know who these groups are, what they do, and whether you want to be involved with one or more of them. We do have quite a few groups in La Jolla. Uh, tonight's event is the first in a series of events like this that will go on throughout this year. Tonight is focused on organizations that deal with land use and governmental matters. Uh, the next event, the State of La Jolla, will be for arts and culture. And museums, historical society, and other groups will attend that and all together and give presentations in the same way that you'll see the speakers giving presentations this evening. And we'll also have one for clubs and charitable organizations like the Women's Club, Lions, and Aquinas. And there will also be one for churches and religious organizations later on in the year. So we expect that this will be a coming together of a lot of different groups that do different things, all volunteers, all volunteers, all people who give their time for free for what they believe to be the betterment of our community. Our next speaker is filling in for the president of La Jolla Parks and Recreation, Doug Fitzgerald, who could not be here tonight. Cindy Greatrex is a legend in La Jolla due to the number of organizations she volunteers with. In fact, if she received a medal for every organization that she serves with, she would look like a four-star general. <laughs> so I'd like you to welcome my friend, Cindy Greatrex. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. President Haskins, thank you very much for that opening and for doing this. This is wonderful. And we all thank you. I am here tonight to proxy for Douglas Fitzgerald. He is the CEO of La Jolla Parks and Rec Incorporated, which is a 501c3 whose predominant goal is running this rec center, its staff, its programs, the facility, and the grounds, everything that you see. It's unfortunate that Doug couldn't be here this evening, but as it turns out, I am actually the perfect proxy, because as Joel Cobb and Steve can tell you, I was going to so many community meetings here that I actually moved in last year. Yeah. So I've been living here, it's, it's been working out pretty well. The, uh, they slapped my mail under the door, so my meals, so I've been eating a lot of flat food, you know, pizza, pancakes, but, but it's been great. So thank you for letting me live here. It makes life much easier. It also explains why Ann Kerr made me the chair of the holiday festival this year at the Rec, because I was home that day anyway. So it all worked out. But enough about me, on to the Rec. The Hoya Rec Center is uh, coming up on its centennial this year, I'll get to that in a minute. Opened up in 1915, a gift from Ellen Browning Scripps, so I'm sure all of you know her. And she played a major role in initiating a lot of institutions in La Jolla, including the La Jolla Sanitarium. A little known fact, a little trivia, when we were first looking to staff community groups in La Jolla back in the day, we went right to the sanitarium. They were, they were very helpful. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It just feels that way sometimes. Anyway. So the rec was, was, uh, was designed by noted architect Irvin Gale, who used a tilt slab method to build this building, which is actually just what it sounds like. The walls of this building were put in on a tilt. The women's club was built the same way. This, this building was built to endure, and it, it certainly has. And Irvin Gale has done many other uh, buildings in San Diego, and will be celebrated quite a bit in 2015, as many of these tilt slab buildings are reaching their 100th mark, as they were designed so well. Next slide, please. The key thing that we do here at the Rec Center, um, the board that runs this is a fiduciary board. As I mentioned, Doug is the president, I'm the vice president, a few of our board members are here in the audience. As a fiduciary board, we have a budget every year, we have to work against that budget, and what we do with that budget is programs. Our goal in 2015 is to add more programs, get more kids in the programs we currently have. We do serve about 25,000 people, and yes, we do actually count these things. The staff here does get a sense every day of who's on the grounds both in the programs and walking. We have 10 scheduled programs and about 500 people in informal recreation activities. You can see here the programming that we have. Um, now what goes on with the yoga classes? That's an actual question. What does go on with the yoga classes? Because I have no idea. There's someone, I'm sure there's And then we've got Tai Chi, a lot of youth sports, and we have a, a great, fantastic staff here that does the maintenance of the center and also the maintenance of the grounds. We do a lot of special events, and there's everyone in this room can partake in one of these events. There's something from ages five to 65 and beyond. 
We've got the pancake breakfast with Kiwanis. We've got Cinco de Mayo, the egg hunt, Halloween, breakfast with Santa, the Easter egg hunt. I mean, there's so much to do. If you guys are not using this building and these facilities, you really should. It's fantastic. And you could spend more time with me. You know? So it's really a win-win. Next slide, please. I did put together uh, two slides of statistics for you. It's really fine print because there is so much going on at this building. But I did give you guys some stats on spring programs, spring events, our famous summer camps, uh, summer programs, and summer events on this slide. You'll note in the summer camp section about mid-slide that we did do a mad science camp uh, last year and this year. It's a growing program, but it's something that's really great because when you look at the STEM opportunities in this country, science, technology, engineering, math, man, we gotta get these kids started early. The earlier the better. So that's just what mad science camp is. The board came up with the idea of saying, instead of just having the kids run around and play as they normally do, let's get them in here and teach them something. So we had 20 kids this year, which is, which is not bad. We're expecting more for 2015. And again, these are just a mention of some of our events, uh, both in spring and summer. And next slide, please. More of same in fall and winter. Our fall programs, events, again, Halloween, a big one. We had over 700 people here on the grounds. Winter programs and winter events are over 50 dances, as I mentioned earlier, are always a big hit. And lunch with Santa, can't go on. Next slide, please. So this year, we decided to bring back flag football to La Jolla. It's been a while. We haven't had a flag football team in La Jolla in a long time. So we put together a group. You can see uh, the group here. That's our flag football team and their coach, Mark, and also Nicole Ochins, who is the recreation director here in the background. And much to our delight, they actually won the City of San Diego Community Parks League in the first year out. So that's a, that's a big deal. So the kids did a fantastic job. They were, uh, willing to post for a picture for La Jolla Light, and I just cribbed that picture from Pat. Thank you, Pat. Um, but they, they did a great job. We're really proud of them. So if you see kids playing flag football, come over, stay on the sidelines, cheer on. Next slide, please. And now, the main reason why I'm here tonight, goals for 2015 is what Mr. Haskins asked for. We've got a big one at the rec. You can see our banner here on the wall. There's some flyers on the back wall, not that I'm pushing it or anything. But we have a major event coming up July 25th, 2015. As I mentioned, this building is 100 years old. It's time for us to celebrate that. We are doing a rededication of the building. The event is open to the public. It is free. It is an all-day event. Because this is a rec center, the key thing always is the children. So we're going to have a myriad of options for the kids to do all day long. Face painting, bouncy houses, ponies, everything you can think of. We're going to have um, the usual and sundry dignitaries from the city, the county, and also a couple from the state have already RSVP. who are going to come and speak. We are going to have the brass plaques in front of the building, excuse me, bronze plaques in front of the buildings cleaned, and we're having a new one made to commemorate this 100th year of, the, of this building. And again, you know, food and drinks, games, everything you can think of. We also have reached out to the elementary schools in La Jolla, and we have asked that each school put in one item for a time capsule. You guys may recall there was a stone pine in the front of the building that unfortunately fell over a few months ago. We're going to replant that tree and we're going to do a time capsule at the same time on July 25th. It's going to be amazing. And this is just my flyer for this event. Again, there's flyers in the back if you want to take one on the way out. And that's about it for me. I hope you guys come to the Centennial. And again, if you haven't been using the programs and events here at the center, please do. Thank you very much for having me and thank the whole light.